starts now. Well, would you look at the clock? It is 6 o'clock right now, and it's already Thursday morning to boot. Yes, thank goodness. And we're going to get straight to your weather headlines with Jonathan. And you reminded us, this time a year ago, yeah. we were bracing for snow. Luckily, not the yeah. case today. Not no, the case. No, more like, close. Yeah, more like spring-like. Yes, for today. which I am okay with. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yesterday, we tied a record in Savannah, 79. Today, right back up in the 70s later today. Not a bad start this morning. All right, thank you so much, Jonathan. Well, Georgia Governor Nathan Deal's time in office is definitely winding down, but he has is headed to Savannah today to help officially open a new building at Georgia Southern's Armstrong campus. That's right. WJCL Stephen Moody joins us live from the campus with a look ahead to the governor's visit. Stephen, good morning. Thank you. It's 503 and right now lawmakers and President Trump still haven't reached a deal to reopen the government. Now the shutdown is now entering day 13. But today the new Congress returns and Democrats will take control of the House. No one budged during yesterday's closed door meeting with the president, Senator Chuck Schumer and House leader Nancy Pelosi say they plan on moving forward with votes on two bills to reopen the government. They hope the president will come to terms with their resolutions. Now, later at 530, our Washington bureau breaks down what Congress has to say and the president will have to overcome to reopen the government. Savannah police also investigating a homicide on Tibet Avenue. Police say they found 20 year old Jamar Davis Jr. Tuesday night dead with a gunshot wound. Right now, investigators don't know who may have shot him. If you have any information on either case, call Savannah Crime Stoppers at the number right here on your screen. 505 and right now the GBI is investigating a death in Baxley. The Bureau says Baxley police were called to a shooting at the Key West Inn on Heritage Street Sunday afternoon. They say several suspects followed Dennis Bryant and his girlfriend to confront him about an earlier incident. Investigators say Bryant was shot and died of his injuries. Luis Torres, Rocky and Rhett Wheeler and two others are in custody in connection with the case. If you have information, call Baxley police. Well, the parents of a former Savannah State University College student shot and killed during a robbery are now suing the apartment complex where that happened. Rebecca Foley's mother says lack of security played a role in her daughter's death and she wants them to be held accountable. Kyle Jones has the story. Stepbrothers Jordan Campbell and Roderick Parrish are serving life without parole plus 20 years in the death of Rebecca Foley. Their parents are currently awaiting trial for intimidating a juror. Time right now is 5.08 and new details this morning about vandalism at the Carnegie Library on East Henry Street in Savannah. A police report shows police were called to the library Friday when someone reported damage. Now sometime between Thursday night and Friday morning, the glass on the back door and another window were shattered. Several bricks were also found near the building, but police say no one actually broke into the library. 606 and new this morning in the low country. If health and fitness goals are part of your New Year's resolution, a new facility on Hilton Head is making it easy to stick to those goals. The Island Rec Center is coming to Wilborn Road. Its grand opening is this Monday and the first week is freebie week. From January 7th to the 14th, you'll have access to the gym and workout classes at no cost. Classes are offered both in the mornings and evenings, and you can sign up now. Instructors say this freebie week is a great way to kick off the new year and even meet some new friends. For more information on the Island Rec Center and how to sign up for those free classes, just head to our website, WJCL.com. Hey guys, good morning. You can see this beautiful tree right here behind me. It's not lit yet, but it will be tonight as we kick off our Light the Way campaign here at Tanger 2 with the annual tree lighting celebration. Now there is something for all ages to enjoy, including face painting, crafts, cookies, and hot chocolate. Santa Claus will even be here making an appearance to help us launch our campaign. And while this celebration is lots of fun, it's also a chance to support an important cause. Light the Way benefits women and children in safe shelters who are survivors of domestic violence right here in our communities. Now here's how you can help. You can donate things like socks, coats, even things like lotions, soaps, books, toys. Those involved say small donations like this really do make a big difference. So here's what you need to know about tonight, that tree lighting ceremony here at Tanger 2 going on from 5 to 7 p.m. And also, if you bring a new unwrapped toy or clothing item here to Tanger 2 now through December 18th, you'll get a free Tanger style coupon book. For now, reporting live in the Low Country, Riley Miller, WJCL 22 News. 22 morning news. Good morning. It's 6:30 on Friday, November 16th. I'm Riley Miller. We'll get to all of those headlines in just a moment. But first, a check of the weather.
Jonathan, thank you. Well, this morning, nearly half of the country is still dealing with the impacts of a major nor'easter. Here's a live look at New York City right now, where many were caught off guard by the early season winter storm. There was even gridlock during the height of the evening rush hour. States from the Carolinas to New England are being slammed with several inches of snow, and that's causing roads to be barely drivable. An uptick in accidents, some of them even deadly. Transportation hubs are also filled with thousands of stranded and frustrated passengers. More than 2,000 flights have also been canceled over the last 24 hours and nearly 8,000 flights delayed. And this morning, we checked the Savannah Hilton Head Airport's website. There are two flights departing to New York that are canceled and one flight to D.C. is delayed. Stephen, thank you. Free food and flu shots will also be available. It's 635 and today the Savannah City Council is holding day two of its budget retreat. They're meeting again at 830 this morning in Port Wentworth. The city's proposed 2019 budget includes more than $92 million going toward police and the fire department. City staff is proposing to eliminate 15 vacant positions within the fire department in the next year. The University of Georgia will do a comprehensive study on the fire department in January. City council members will review fire department costs again when that report is released. Well, we are a little more than two weeks into the Beaufort County plastic bag ban and already it's stirring up some strong feelings, but one nonprofit, the Palmetto Ocean Conservancy, is working to make the transition easier, offering up some tips for folks in the low country. The first suggestion for shoppers, leave reusable bags or totes in your car so you always have them with you. If you use paper bags, try doubling them up for heavier items so they don't rip. The group also says be patient. Like most things, change can be difficult, but with time become easier. The nonprofit says while this ban is challenging for many right now, it's shaping up for a better future. By the way, the Palmetto Ocean Conservancy is also hosting a beach cleanup event this Sunday. If you'd like to take part, it's happening at Burke's Beach starting at 8 a.m. Well, Georgia is considering standardizing school calendars across the state. Lawmakers met to discuss that schedule Wednesday. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution shows the tourism industry would like to see longer summer breaks to help fill part-time jobs during travel season. A committee report isn't due until next month, but the paper reports they plan to meet one more time before the legislation session starts in January. It's 638 and one organization is teaming up with a local school to make sure their students don't go without a Thanksgiving meal. Peach Belt Health Plan gave away 100 turkeys to Gold Elementary School families. It's something they do every year. And for some students at the school, the donation is their only way to enjoy a traditional Thanksgiving meal. Each day at Health Plan is also giving another 100 turkeys to another venture daycare. Jonathan, thank you. It is 639 and President Trump will soon visit California after those devastating wildfires. Next, our Washington newsroom has a full report on that visit.